Hello, my friends. God bless each and every one of you. My name is David. Today is the 10th day of December. It is Tuesday evening, 2019, and I hope you're having a good day or had a good day wherever you are at. Today, I want to talk about something that we see so much of today. As a matter of fact, it's become so prevalent today that it's almost... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it's almost normal, uh, natural, uh, and I'm talking about hatred. Now, we saw the other day um, when uh, Speaker Pelosi was asked about hating the president, we seen how quickly she snapped and went back to that podium and was, uh, you know, uh, that's a good indicator that uh, she is not... Uh, <laughs> Well, doesn't have any affection towards President. I'm not going to say she hates him, but you can tell she has very little affection or very little affinity towards the President of any kind. But I want to talk about hatred in general, and I want to talk about first what the Bible says about it, and actually what it can do to your life if you continue to harbor hatred towards, well, whatever, towards a neighbor, towards an, uh, an ex-wife or ex-husband, towards uh, just whatever. Hate can destroy your life. And I can give you plenty of examples where it is done exactly that. So the Bible says we're going to start with 1 John chapter 4, verse 20. It goes as follows. This is the King James Version as I try to always use on my channel. If a man say, I love God and hateth his brother... He is a liar. Did you get that? That was about as that was about as plain and to the point as as the scripture could ever possibly be. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love a God whom he hath not seen? I actually think that this scripture, first John chapter four, verse twenty. I really, really think that this is one of the, well, it's not used very often, but it is so, it's one of these scriptures that it's powerful. It's not a long scripture. It's only a few lines, but what it says within those few lines is very powerful because it's, it's what I call hitting straight to the heart. When a scripture hits straight to the heart, it's the it hits it's the truth. Well, of course they're all truth, but what I mean is it, it hits home. If you kind of get what I'm saying, it hits the nail right on the head. And that is one of these scriptures that is absolutely on target. Now, Proverbs 10, verse 12 goes as follows: Hateth stirreth up strifes, but love covereth all sins. Another good one. Uh, the last one I'm going to read is Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. We're going to go back into the Old Testament for this one. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. For what they're saying is do not wish any ill will towards your neighbor. Do not wish anything, you know, hatred of any kind. Uh, so basically, I want to talk about, obviously, I want to talk about hate. We're seeing this so much today. Why? Why do you think today, of all days, and I don't mean specifically Tuesday, December 10th, but I mean this day in time, why do you think hatred is so prevalent in our society today? Why? What makes this different in this decade than the previous decade. There's always been hate. There's been hate all the way back from when Cain and Abel, when they committed the first murder. It goes all the way back to even before that, when Adam and Eve com uh, committed the first sin. So there's always been some type of strife, some type of uh, hatred amongst men throughout history. But today, it's more prevalent. It's prevalent in our news it's prevalent in our, our television programs. It's prevalent on the internet. It's prevalent in the print. 
that we the, the newsprint that we read, the magazines, it's everywhere. Everybody has an opinion, and the majority of the people hate something somebody does, hate something somebody says, and they use the word hate or despise or despicable or something along that line. It's just an ever never ending string of hate. Now, my question to you, where does it come from? Does hate come from the Lord? Is that something the Lord is, is known to, to do? Of course not. Of course not. Christ loves each and every single one of us. The ones that despise him, he loves them. So it does not come from him. It comes from Lucifer, the morning star. The one that challenged God Almighty and was booted out of heaven with a third of the angels. That is where hate comes from. That is where that hate derives from inside. Now, you know, people get angry. There's, I can understand that to a point. But hatred is something, if you're a believer in Christ, that is something you need to rid yourself of in your life. Because I'm telling you, it is one of the massive things that will drag you down like a lead weight in water. It'll just pull you straight down to the bottom. And my friends, that's not any place any of us, any of us needs to be. Now we've got plenty of examples of hatred throughout uh, society, but I'm going to focus on one specific event in history. Not too far back, 40 years. I know in history term, that's nothing to us. That's a long time. You know, but I'm going to focus on an event that uh, just actually was uh, 41 years ago in November. It was 40 years ago in uh, November of 2018. And that that was uh, a man who started out preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. He actually started out on fire for the Lord. This is true. And I don't know if many know this. They only know the wacky side of this gentleman, and, and they know the end game that happened, but they don't, I don't know if many know the very beginning when he first started out. He was an on-fire preacher for the Lord. He preached the gospel of Jesus Christ. He preached the Bible. He preached the truth, but somewhere along the lines, he let that hatred bubble up inside of him. He let it bubble up to the point where it consumed his every day. It consumed his every waking minute of every day. And I am talking about none other than the gentleman by the name of Jim Jones, who took a huge flock of over 900 people down to Georgetown, down to Guyana, and built a town or a camp in the jungle, which was named Jonestown, and, of course, we all know the end story of that. The hatred just consumed that man and overpoured onto his people. And they literally, not all of them, some of them were actually murdered, but a lot of them laid their lives down for that man. And his hate for America, his hate for capitalism, his hate for God, his hate for the Bible, and most of all, his hate for Jesus and this can be heard on many, many of his sermons that he had given prior when he, I guess, went wacky or whatever you want to call it. You know, he he just absolutely despised God. He despised the Bible. He despised Jesus. And, and, and it, he went off the deep end. He let his hate consume him. And I'm using him as an example because he started out for Christ. And, and again, I don't know if a lot of people know that, but he did start out for Christ. He did. He preached the gospel when he first started out. But somewhere along the line, somewhere along the line, he let that hatred creep into his life. And we know the rest of the story. A lot of people, a lot of people lost their lives on that November day in 1978 because they followed a man that had lost it all. He lost the love of Jesus. He lost it all. And the rest is history. What's done is done. There's no turning back for Jim Jones. There's no second chances 
for Jim Jones and his people that followed him. Their, their history and their end is written. It is done. But you, you my friends that are listening to my voice right now, you still have an opportunity while you're walking this earth. You still have an opportunity to give your life to Christ and rid yourself of that hate. If you got that hate in your heart, you need to rid it. And I'm telling you, Jesus Christ can take it just like that. He can remove it from you just like that. All you got to do is ask him into your heart. Repent of your sins. And I promise you this very day, it'll be the greatest decision you've ever made in your entire life. That I can absolutely guarantee. You know how they say there's no guarantees in life but death and taxes? Well, I'll give you another one. Accepting Jesus Christ, the best guarantee of all, because he'll be there for you every day. And then when you do leave this earth, you'll have eternity with him in heaven. How wonderful, how wonderful that is. My friends, take care. God bless each and every one of you. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening, and I will see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.